Okay, good evening, buddies. I hope I'm audible and the screen is visible. Can you make him a bit small, please? I'm, I'm like I'm covering too much part of the screen. Or to us, just right side pe shift kar sakte hain. Kya Aliya Bhatt ji ki baatein kar rahe hain, bhai? You're talking about Aliya Bhatt. Focus on studies. We can always talk about Aliya Bhatt later on. Sure, buddy, I'll talk to uh, you in English only, don't worry. The lecture will be in English only, don't worry. The lecture will be entirely in English. Am I audible to the student, VMG? Hello, buddy, I hope I'm audible and the screen visible. Are definitely I share the PDF, don't worry. We will uh, have a word with sir and uh, then I'll share the PDF, don't worry. Or you can always check the link on your phone, maybe that's why it's working or not. I think it's working, you know. Okay, okay. But uh, Dr. Kumar Sujit ji, I believe it will be enough. I I'll try my level best to make it more than enough for you guys. You don't have to worry about it. I'll try to make sure that it's more than enough for you guys. Now, let's uh, not waste any more time, please. And uh, let's get going, please. Right. 
if you want i can wait for another minute or two and uh, then we'll start now the session uh, would be for around uh, four hours four hour sessions so around two hours class in the beginning then we take a small break and then another class of uh, around two hours so by 10 pm we'll end this class by 10 pm we'll end this class right by 10 pm we'll end this class and uh, the pattern of the notes will be like we will do an extremely rapid revision since you people are very close to your exam and orthopedics you people consider it to be a small subject right so uh, yes of course so this will be an extremely rapid revision then uh, i'll share uh, some uh, one liners also within the notes right within the notes i'll uh, share some one liners right okay so we'll continue first now you see first of all the important things i'll keep on tick mark i'll either tick mark it or i'll write this question that the questions have come Dr. Gokulji, Gokul I'll try to get back to the team because I've not shared the, with them the PDF, but I'll share this PDF as soon as we are done with the class. Fine. Now this, let's say the father of the orthopedics, Nicholas Andre, that question has featured in one or two examinations as of now. Now, buddy, when we start studying orthopedics, we have to study about the deformities. We have to study about the deformities. Now, if you notice fixed deformity, fixed deformity at elbow joint we use the prefix cubitus similarly at the hip joint we use the word coxa at the knee joint we use the word genu at the hand that means at the wrist joint we use the word manus at the toe great toe we use the word hallux at the foot we use the word pes or Talips. Now, the PES and TALIPS, they can be used interchangeably. They can be used interchangeably. Now, you see here, the deformity could be, let's say, your patient has got a deformity at the elbow, right? Now, that deformity is of two types. Either it is going to be cubitus valgus or it is going to be cubitus varum. Similarly, at the hip joint, the deformity is going to be coxa varum or coxa valgum, right? We'll see that, what kind of deformities and how do we see the deformities. Now, see here. So, what we do here, buddies, uh, somebody of you mentioned, Dr. Meet Patelji. You said that, please go conceptually. I'll try to go as conceptually as the time permits, right? Now, whether to see our patient has got valgum, or varum but if we always look at the distal most part for example in the lower limb the distal most part is the feet now this red colored line is the midline if the feet are going away from the midline we say that our patient has got valgum deformity valgum deformity you see here in the second image also, the red colored line is the midline and if the feet are going away from the midline, we say that our patient has got valgum deformity. So if the distal most part is going away from the midline, valgum. And if it is coming inwards, varum deformity. See the images, buddy. First and second image. Now, this red colored line again is the midline. Fine. We'll, uh, yes, uh, Dr. Chalanji, we'll come to that. Fine. So, you see here the distal most part is close to the midline. So, it is a varum deformity. And varum deformity is called bow leg. Now, if the distal most part are going away from the midline and the problem is at the knee joint then we say it's a valgum deformity and the valgum deformity is called knock knee. Valgum deformity at the knee joint is called knock knee. Now, how to check whether the knee joint is problematic or the hip joint is problematic? So, I have drawn this image. Fine. Now, you see that's a normal hip joint and let's say that's a normal knee joint. 
but is I'm going to show you four images now four images now see here now look at this in this image the hip joint is normal and the knee joint is abnormal the feet are going away from the midline the problem is that knee joint because you see the knee joint is abnormal and because the feet are going away from the midline so we say it's a genu valgum deformity genu valgum deformity right the next image again here buddies the hip joint is absolutely normal i'll tell you why i am calling the hip joint normal okay and the knee joint is abnormal because buddies the knee joint is abnormal i'll call this deformity genu now you see buddies the feet they are very close to midline they are very very close to midline so i'll call this genu verum deformity genu verum deformity now in the third image you see what is the knee joint is normal and it is the hip joint which is abnormal because the hip joint is abnormal i'll call this deformity coxa because the feet are going away from the midline i'll call this deformity coxa valgum you can use it like this coxa valga you can call it coxa valgus everything is the same there everything is the same there now again you see here the knee joint is absolutely normal and there is some problem at the hip joint so we'll call it coxa and the feet they are going inward so we'll call it coxa verum now buddy i said that the hip joint is abnormal how can i call a hip joint abnormal how can i call a hip joint abnormal let's see how do we do so what is what we will do is first we will take an x-ray then we will draw first line this is the first line which we draw now this line goes through the neck of femur then buddies we draw second line this line goes through the shaft of femur this line goes through the shaft of femur then we measure the angle between the two we measure the angle between the two if this line if this angle is less than 120 we say that our patient has got coxa verum if this angle is more than 135 we say that our patient has got coxa valgum deformity coxa valgum deformity fine so that is how we are easily able to make out whether the hip joint is normal or abnormal fine i'll tell you more about this when we start discussing the hip joint when we start discussing the hip joint now so uh, somebody of you mentioned about this the gum and the thing so let's say there is a sticky gum between the knees the feet will spread that is called as well gum and if there is a bottle of rum between the knees the feet will come close so that is called as way rum way rum that's a way to remember fine valgum and verum this question was there in the last year examination now same thing for the elbow joint you see we have three images here a b and c this red colored line is the midline now the hand is at normal distance i'll tell you why i'm calling it normal now if the hand is close to the midline we call it cubitus varus if the hand the distal most part is away from the midline we call it cubitus valgus now why and how am i able to say that the image b is absolutely normal what we do here buddies we again do the same thing we'll again do the same thing what do we do here 
we take an x-ray we take an x-ray first of all we take an x-ray then we draw a line through the mid of arm this red line is a line through the mid of arm then what is we draw a second line right through the mid of forearm right through the mid of forearm then we measure this angle between the two now this angle is called carrying angle angle between the arm and forearm is called carrying angle now the normal carrying angle is 5 to 10 degree in males and 10 to 15 degree in females you see females they have got wider pelvis that is why the angle is more now if this angle is more if this angle is high this is called as cubitus valgus if this angle is low this is called as cubitus varus cubitus varus let's have a look at other pictures now see here, here there is some problem at the wrist joint. So we say that our patient is suffering from something called as manus varus deformity. Problem at the wrist, feet going, sorry, hands going inwards. Now see here, problem at the feet and the feet are going inward. So name of the disorder is talips varus. Problem at the feet and feet going outward that is called as talips valgus talips valgus same thing occurring at the great toe now this is called hallux valgus problem at the great toe that is by the name hallux now the distal most part is going outward that is why the term hallux hallux now, if you see it correctly, buddies, in this patient, the deformity in the right foot is different from deformity in the left foot. Now, you see, buddy, in the right foot, the great toe is going outward. So, it is a valgus deformity. In the left foot, you see that the great toe is going inward. So, it is a varus deformity. It is a varus deformity now if the patient has valgus deformity in one limb and varus in the other it is called wind sweep deformity it is called wind sweep deformity so the most common cause in children it is rickets and in adults it is rheumatoid arthritis i'm discussing the most common cause of wind sweep deformity yes dr mukutraji dr gaganji dr meet patel ji oh, you guys are brilliant okay now speaking about the skeleton the skeletal system now the axial skeleton 80 bones now the primary role is weight bearing now, what is where do we make a mistake? Axial skeleton, hyoid bone and the ear ossicles, they are a part of axial skeleton. They are a part of axial skeleton. No role in weight bearing still, they are called a part of axial skeleton. A pendicular skeleton. A pendicular skeleton is made up of 126 bones and the predominant role is locomotion now here where do we make a mistake clavicle is a part of a pendicular skeleton clavicle is a part of a pendicular skeleton fine now you see buddies bones they are made up of organic part and inorganic part now organic part is very very soft because it is made up of cells because it is made up of collagen because it is made up of proteins an inorganic part is the part which makes the bone hard now let's quickly read them one by one you see the organic part osteocytes they are the mature 
bone cells osteoblast are the cells which build bone b for blast b for build oh my god they are showing me karina kapoor on screen wow i like it now osteoclast are the cells which consume the bone that means they destroy the preformed bone okay buddies i'll use the darker pen okay 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 thank you so much for pointing out dr benjamin ji now the collagen bone has got type 1 collagen thank you so much dr benjamin ji now Apart from collagen, bone also has got non-collagenous protein. So it is called osteopontin, osteonectin, bone sialoprotein. If you don't want to remember these, just remember this, osteopontin, also called as osteocalcin, also called as osteocalcin, fine. Now the inorganic part of the bone, which makes the bone hard, it is made up of hydroxy appetite now what is the formula of hydroxy appetite 10 molecules of calcium 6 molecules of phosphate and 2 molecules of hydroxyl 2 molecules of hydroxyl right now cells plus protein is called osteoid in a growing bone osteoid in a growing bone now that's a unit of growing bone osteoid now in mature bone it is called as osteon it is called as osteon now the parts of the bone parts of a long bone so at the end we have got epiphysis epiphysis what uh, arises from here giant cell tumor the osteoclastoma favorite question of examiner for last three four years then in between the epiphysis and diaphysis lies another thing called metaphysis what arises from metaphysis osteomyelitis the infection of bone and osteosarcoma most common primary malignant bone tumor and what arises from diaphysis ewing sarcoma yes sure buddies dr jatka ji doc sahab ka to naam hi jatka hai <laughs> okay yeah buddy i'll do that don't worry now you see here Let's say this is epiphysis, this is metaphysis, and in between lies something called as physis. Now, the physis is not visible. Well, thank you, buddy. Thank you, buddy. I'm so glad. Now, periosteum. The outer layer of the periosteum is the fibrous layer. Dr. Dr. Jatka ji, some topics are already written. I'll just have to dictate them. Now here, you know, but just to build up the momentum. Now the inner layer is called cambrium layer, cambrium layer. Now that's the question. Periosteum is absent over sesamoid bones. It is absent over sesamoid bones and it is absent over intra-articular part of the bone it is absent over intra articular part of the bone now the compact bone and the cancellous bone so the outer part of the bone is cortical now this part is dense it is so dense that it has got very poor vascularity so that is why this part will heal very very slow after a fracture after a fracture now the inner part, the cancellous bone. Now the cancellous bone has got less density, but it has got very good vascularity. Now this heals very, very rapidly. This heals very, very rapidly. Now buddies, what happens is at metaphysis, 
most of the bone is made up of cancellous bone. So at metaphysis, if a fracture occurs, that fracture heals so rapidly that it goes into malunion. It goes into malunion. That is why, buddies, the supra condylar fracture. Fine. That is why the inter trochantric inter trochantric fracture of femur. Now, in these two places, buddies, the malunion is very, very common. Malunion is very, very common. Similarly, for collis fracture also, the malunion is very, very common. The reason is that these fractures, they occur at metaphysis. These fractures, they occur at metaphysis. So, they heal extremely rapidly. They heal extremely rapidly. Fine. So, malunion will be very, very common there. Remember, supracondylar fracture, sorry, supracondylar fracture, if there is malunion, what will occur? Gun stock deformity. Gun stock deformity. Can any one of you please tell me how do we correct the gun stock deformity? Now, if there is Collie's fracture, remember what kind of deformity? Dinner folk deformity. What kind of deformity? Dinner folk deformity. If there is neck of femur fracture, which is extra capsular, fine. So there also occurs deform. There also occurs malunion. Now gun stock deformity can be corrected with the help of French osteotomy. Dinner folk deformity can be corrected with the help of Darach operation. Can be corrected with the help of Darach operation. No, Dr. Meetji, don't make this mistake. Fracture neck of femur, but is which is intracapsular. That fracture will undergo non-union. That fracture will undergo non-union. Right? I'll tell you the reason when we start discussing the hip joint. When we start discussing the hip joint. Fine? Now, we are done with it. Till now, do you have any query? If you have any query, do let me know. Otherwise, uh, kindly allow me to proceed to the next topic there. So, the next thing is the rickets. Next thing is the rickets. Now, so rickets, that's the background. You see, the bones are soft because of organic part. It is the inorganic part which makes the bones hard. Now, which makes, who makes the bone hard? The calcium and phosphate. How do we get them? From the diet. Now, you see, what are the sources of vitamin D? What one is from the diet, second is from the skin. Now, skin has got vitamin D precursors. When UV rays fall on them, in that case, vitamin D will be formed. Now, which UV rays? Remember, UVA rays are for aging. UVB rays are for, I mean, they cause burns. They build vitamin D, fine. And they can also cause melanoma. So, real culprit are UVB rays. Now, UVC rays, they don't reach earth. So, UVB rays are necessary for building vitamin D, but their excess can cause burns as well as melanoma. Now, what is there in the skin? Cholecalciferol is formed in the skin. What do we get from diet? Ergocalciferol. Now, these are useless. 
unless the liver converts them into calcidiol, which is also useless. So ultimately, your patient will get something called as calcitriol. Now, calcitriol is biologically active form of vitamin D. Biologically active form of vitamin D. Now, in India, the poor diet is most common cause of deficiency of vitamin D, calcium and phosphate. Whereas, lack of sun exposure is the cause of rickets in, in uh, western countries. We will see the clinical feature one by one. So, craniotabes is the earliest clinical feature seen in your patient. So, what is that? Softening of the skull at suture line. Softening of the skull at suture line. That is the earliest clinical feature seen in rickets. Now, the skull is deformed, buddies. That is called as frontal bossing frontal bossing the deformed skull that is called as frontal bossing chest is also deformed and a line appears between chest and abdomen but is this line is called harrison sulcus this line is called harrison sulcus you can call it Harrison sulcus. You can call it Harrison groove. Remember, the costochondral joint is deformed. Costochondral joint is deformed. Your patient will experience something which is called as rachitic rosary. Something which is called as rachitic rosary it appears like this rachitic rosary now the rosary appears in uh, another disease also scurvy how to differentiate rachitic rosary will occur in rickets scorbotic rosary will occur in scurvy rachitic rosary is round and uh, you know it is uh, non-tender Scorbotic rosary is pointed, angular, and it is very tender to touch. You touch the points and the child starts crying. Child starts crying. Then you see, buddy, your patient has got multiple deformities. Your patient has got multiple deformities, like genuvalgum, called as knockney, genuverum, called as bow, leg. Genuverum called as bow leg. Now, what is in adults? In adults, osteoarthritis it causes genuverum, and rheumatoid arthritis it causes genu valgum. Now, in rickets, the wind sweep deformity also occurs. Wind sweep deformity also occurs. So you see rickets, the most common cause of wind stream deformity in children. Whereas in adult, it is the rheumatoid arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis. Speaking about the investigation, we know that the serum calcium is low or uh, maybe even normal. Don't forget buddies that 1% of the body calcium is in blood. And 99% is in skeletal system, is in skeletal system. Phosphate levels, they will be low. Now remember buddies, our patient is a growing child. Bones are being formed. So that means there will be too many osteoblasts. Now, these are the cells which are rich in alkaline phosphatase, which are rich in alkaline phosphatase. Now, Harrison sulcus is not seen in scurvy. 
So the alkaline phosphatase levels would be very, very high. Now, but is on X-ray, you'll see something called as cupping. So if this is normal bone, then cupping would be like this. Splaying means widening. Fraying means the rough edges, rough edges. Now see here buddies, I'll erase this for you so that you're able to appreciate there. Now see buddies, this is normal, let's see. Now you see it is going deep, so that is cupping. Now fraying means rough edges. See here, let me show you again. Now, if you can see the fraying, fraying means rough edges. Splaying means widening, widening, right? Again, you see here, but as you can see everything here, you can see widening. That is called as splaying. You can see deepening. That is called as cupping. You can see rough edges. That is called as fraying. That is called as fraying. You need to give your patient too much of vitamin D because mother's milk is very poor source of vitamin D. Only 2 to 40 international units are present per liter. Now, in contrast, the dairy milk, which we buy from the market, that is fortified, 400 to like 400 international units per liter. So, treatment is either you give 6 lakh international units intramuscular or you can divide it into 6 oral dosages you can divide this into six oral dosages of one lakh unit each six oral dosages of one lakh unit each dr muskan uh, your your patient of rickets can have at least 10 or 15 clinical features not all clinical features may be present because you know at times your patient may seek treatment all the clinical features gone. Your patient uh, develops the genu valgum verum deformity when your the patient starts walking. Suppose your patient seeks treatment, then it will be gone. Fine. So the follow up has to be done with two to five thousand international units per day of vitamin D, and this has to be given orally. You need to give it for six to eight weeks at least minimum now phosphate levels they begin rising within 96 hours this is how you check whether uh, the treatment is working or not radiological healing is working it is seen within six to seven weeks in hundred percent of the patient what is the radiological healing line of frankel so that is zone of calcification now what is it is earliest seen around wrist joint earliest it is seen around wrist joint hello dr airbeds i'm glad I'm, I'm 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 actually glad to be with you guys <laughs> i'm also not able to contain my happiness of being with you all now in rickets there is increased risk of hemangiopericytoma Himangio peritoxoma. Same to you, Dr. Shivamji. Now, because I know your time is extremely precious, so I am trying to move at uh, your pace. Now, the, uh, the osteomalacia. We also call it adult onset rickets. Now, this is seen in women of developing country seen in the women's of developing countries glad buddies glad buddies why buddies because they remain covered and they have got poor diet poor diet fine 
Now the clinical features here are not very important. Still, I'll mention one. Your patient will have low back ache. Your patient will have low back ache and polymyalgia. Polymyalgia. Now X-ray will show you something called as pseudo fracture, which are also called as milkman fracture milkman fracture now they are basically insufficiency fracture and they are described as impression of pulsating blood vessels on the soft bones pulsating blood vessels on the soft bone right this is how they look see this is how they look now they are most commonly seen in the lower limb where do you get to see them in the neck of femur now in the upper limb they are seen in the ribs and infraglenoid region that is in the scapula so this is an important question for fmg this is an important question for neat right so in the pelvis what we get to see we get to see something called as tri radiate pelvis we also call it otto pelvis we also called as otto pelvis Dr. Meet Patel ji, pathological fracture by definition is that fracture which occurs in a bone made weak by a disease. So this is insufficiency fracture, basically an incomplete fracture, an incomplete fracture. Fine. Or... 60,000 international units every week for 10 weeks is the treatment. Now, this point is important for need PG. When your patient is taking some of the drugs like anti-epileptics, phenytoin, carbamazepine, Fine. Phenobarbitone. Now these drugs, they interfere with vitamin D metabolism. Fine. So you should give your patient vitamin D. Cholestyramine. Then ATT, anti-tubercular therapy. Which one? Rifampicin. It interferes with vitamin D metabolism. Steroids, glucocorticoids, they also interfere with vitamin D metabolism. Fine. Then we have got aluminium containing antacids. So when your patient is taking these, in that case, you should give your patient extra vitamin D. Now, how do we get a definitive diagnosis? We get a definitive diagnosis by transiliac bone biopsy. Transiliac bone biopsy. Just keeping up with the pace so that, uh, I mean, as little of your time I consume, we move to the next topic. So, osteoporosis. Now, osteoporosis. What happens here in osteomalacia? The bone has got very good volume. But bone has got very low density. In osteoporosis, bone has got low volume as well as low density. Volume is also low. Density is also low. So here in osteomalacia, the bone is soft. 
in osteoporosis the bone is soft as well as smaller in volume smaller in volume that's the difference between uh, osteomalacia and osteoporosis now primary osteoporosis that means your patient has no other disease your patient has no other disease now it is of two type type 1 post menopausal type 2 senile anyone who is young today after a few years he or she will become old so senile osteoporosis is considered to be most common is considered to be most common secondary osteoporosis that means any other disease is causing osteoporosis now it most commonly occurs with glucocorticoids your patient is taking external steroids it is also seen in rheumatoid arthritis ankylosing spondylitis and tuberculosis ankylosing spondylitis and tuberculosis fine now clinical features most common is low back ache low back ache your patient moves bending forward now that is called dovagar hump deformity now uh, doctor kaun uh, sahab hai hamare meet patel ji pathological fracture is the fracture which occurs in bone made weak by a disease right buddies now the most common cause is osteoporosis but is the second most common cause is secondary tumors most common site is lumbar vertebrae in both osteoporosis as well as secondary tumor coming to the x-ray finding so x-ray finding what we get to see we get to see something called as fish mouth vertebrae fish mouth vertebrae like this fish mouth vertebrae fine this is how the mouth of fish looks like fish mouth vertebrae right now the fish mouth vertebrae they are seen when 30 percent of the bone mass is 30 percent of the bone mass is lost at that time we get to see fish mouth vertebrae at that time we'll get to see fish mouth vertebrae right so the normal vertebra is like this the fish mouth vertebra would be like this see how much reduced volume now in between them this is the fish mouth fish mouth fine yeah cod fish vertebra fish mouth vertebra you can call them by any name Dr. Priyanka ji, it seems you're fond of the codfish. Okay, so it is seen in other diseases also. I believe this is common, uh, this is a question which might be important in uh, NEAT or INE. So you see, it is seen primarily in osteoporosis. It might be seen in sickle cell disease, hereditary spherocytosis, homocystinuria, renal osteodystrophy, and osteogenesis imperfecta. My kind and humble request to my FMG friends, See, the examination is going to be the same for all. We used to believe that it is slightly easy. It is, but very, very slightly easy. My kind and humble request that everyone should at least remember it is seen in sickle cell disease also. Sickle cell disease also shows cod 
fish vertebra. Okay, now the gold standard investigation is dual energy X-ray absorptometry. We can call it DEXA scan. We can call it DEXA scan. Now see the peak bone mass is seen at 25 to 30 years of age and after that it declines at the rate of 0.5 percent every year every year now t score we get t score when bone mineral density of the patient is compared with race and gender matched young individual you see t t stands for teacher if the bone mineral density of an old teacher is compared with bone mineral density of a young student that will be called as t score now the value of the t-score it can vary it can vary from you see here minus 4 to plus 4 now if the value is between minus 2.5 to minus 4 we say that the patient has got osteoporosis osteoporosis now bone mineral density z score bone mineral density of the patient when it is compared with bone mineral density of race, gender and age matched individual. Now see what is there are two females in your clinic mrs x mrs y both of them are 65 year old both of them are north indian if you compare their bone mineral density you will get something called as z score now if you compare the bone mineral density of a 30 year old north indian male with the bone mineral density of your patient who is a 65 year old north indian male you will get t score yes 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 exactly the density of young with the density of old if you compare you get something called as t scores now what is about the treatment there are some drugs which act on osteoclast that means they ask osteoclast to stop destroying the bone now the first drug class is bisphosphonate so we have got alendronate risandronate once a week dose second ibandronate once a month dose third zolendronic acid once a year dose once a year dose another is calcitonin remember calcitonin what does it do so it will shift the calcium from blood to bone we can give our patient estrogen as a part of hormone replacement therapy. We can give our patient selective estrogen receptor modulator like tamoxifen. We can also give our patient danusumab. Now this prevents rank from accepting, uh, you know, activating the receptor rank on the surface of osteoclast. 
So denosumab is basically a mono clonal antibody. Then bodies we have drugs which act on osteoblast. So they increase bone production. They increase bone production. Now, so teriparatide is basically synthetic parathyroid hormone. So if given at low doses, it forms bone. If given at high doses, it destroys bone. Then we have got drugs like strontium ranulate, which are dual action. They act on osteoblast as well as osteoclast. Now why they are not used? Because they are nephrotoxic. Now, the surgical treatment is to repair the bones, is to make the bone strong by using liquid bone cement, liquid bone cement. What is the formula? Polymethyl methacrylate acetate. That is the formula. So what we do is, let's say the patient comes to us and we have got weak bone. We will inject bone cement and the same bone will become super strong. Same bone will become super strong. Osteoporosis. This topic is also over. We move to the next topic there. That is osteogenesis imperfecta achondroplasia and Paget disease. Now, remember osteogenesis imperfecta is also called as brittle bone disease. Why? Because the bones are so weak that they break super easily. They break super easily. Now, this is a genetic defect. The defect name is call 1A1 and call 1A2. Fine. So, collagen type 1 is most commonly affected. Most commonly affected. That is why the bone formed is small and weak. Multiple fractures are common. Bone formed is small and weak. Ligaments, they are lax. That means loose. Because the ligaments are loose. Dislocations are common. The teeth, they are very, very small. The sclera is so thin, very, very thin, that the choroid is visible. The blue colored choroid, you can easily see behind the sclera. See here, buddies. The blue colored choroid, you can easily see behind the sclera. You see, the blue colored choroid, you can easily see behind the sclera. So this is sclera. You can easily see the choroid behind the sclera. Bones are weak. So they can be easily deformed. So you see the foramen. They are also deformed. Foramen are also deformed. Foramen are the holes in the skull through which cranial nerves move out cranial nerves move out of the skull so your patient can have multiple cranial nerve palsies so they are crushed in the foramen there are mnemonic i'm sure you must have got these mnemonics so what are the clinical features remember bones are small Fine. Bones are small. Your patient can have deafness, 
fine then uh, your uh, patient can have blue sclera the nerve compression then these are the most common structure affected skin tendon and teeth now there's another mnemonic there clinical features blue sclera dental abnormalities sense of hearing impaired and multiple fractures if you want to go slightly more there these patients are very prone to malignant hyperthermia these patients are very prone to malignant hyperthermia malignant hyperthermia treatment the drug of choice is bisphosphonate surgical treatment is sofield miller osteotomy so you see here the bone is like this you insert a rod and make it straight make it straight now this when you insert a rod it looks like this you see what is there is a rod over here so that is why it is called as seek kebab osteotomy that is why it is called as seek kebab osteotomy now achondroplasia it is considered the most common cause of dwarfism now it is autosomal dominant it is autosomal dominant so there is a mutation in fibroblast growth factor what is the name of a mutation fgfr3 now 80 percent of the cases they are fresh mutation that means buddies there is no family history now these patients they don't get to marry when they won't get to marry they'll not have children the disease will not be passed on disease will not be passed on to their children they'll not get married they'll not have babies simple as that now the clinical features first of all naturally they have got short height and short arm span short arm span but is they have got star fish hands all the fingers they are of equal size all the fingers they are of equal size you see the star fish hands all the fingers they are of same size fine then what is they have you see this starfish hands then they have simian crease they have got simian crease so that's a single prominent line single prominent line seen on their hand single prominent line seen on their hand see here so this is simian crease simian crease now they have trident hand you'll notice there is very wide separation between the middle finger and ring finger trident hand so their hands they look like this one two three one two three trident hands trident hand now when you look at the x-ray you get to see that the pelvis is very broad but the pelvis is not very tall that is typically called as champagne glass pelvis champagne glass pelvis now that's a concept slightly difficult for us to understand because you know we people don't have different glasses for different drinks in college remember the disposable glass everything goes in that disposable glass right from coca-cola beer other drinks they all go in the disposable glass 
we don't have uh, separate glasses for champagne beer and all so on the x-ray we get to see something called as bullet shaped vertebra bullet shaped vertebra bullet shaped vertebra are those who have got beaks yeah 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 you know uh, the time is nearing eight o'clock and i don't want to name that drink because you know otherwise Someone from deep inside me will start calling that Malik, it is the time. Malik, it is the time to have a drink or two. Now, rhizomelic micromelia. That means shortening of the bones. Shortening of the bone is prominent in. proximal bones dr karthik ji <laughs> yes dr priyanka exactly dr karthik ji triradiate pelvis will look like this like a triangle like this triradiate whereas the champagne glass pelvis would look like this would look like this fine you see you will be very easily able to differentiate now if you look at the triradiate pelvis you see the length the height is perfectly normal now here the length is substantially reduced right in the champagne glass pelvis now the next last disorder here, Paget disease, also called as osteitis deformans. After this topic, we'll see some of the x-rays. Okay, genetic defect. What is the genetic defect? SQSTM1 mutation. Where is it present? 5Q35 QTER. 5Q35 QTER. Those of you who say that orthopedics, we don't want to invest too much energy. Just remember this, SQSTM1. Now, three phases. Lytic phase, bone is destroyed. Lytic phase, bone is destroyed. Blastic phase, bone is formed. And then, in the last, we have got sclerotic phase. Now, in the lytic phase, too much of bone is destroyed too much of the bone is destroyed now what is when the bone is destroyed what occurs what are formed hydroxy proline so level of hydroxy proline and deoxypyridinolin they will be very very high because large amount of bone is being formed what do we get to see on x-ray we get to see something called as osteoporosis circumscripta osteoporosis circumscripta but is please notice in the x-ray you see here everywhere the bone is normal everywhere the bone is normal but you see here the bone is destroyed the bone is destroyed right similarly here everywhere the bone is normal but here you see buddies the bone is destroyed the bone is destroyed now in the long bones you get to see candle flame sign so you see up till this point the bone is normal and beyond this line you see the bone is abnormal the bone is abnormal bone is abnormal so a candle flame can very easily sit inside this very easily sit inside this blade of grass can very easily sit inside this that is why in the long bone we get to see blade of grass or candle flame sign now in the mixed stage the second stage what happens is 
too much bone is formed who forms osteo blast now when the osteoblast are there level of hydroxyprolin will be high bone is being formed bone is being destroyed also so the level of deoxypyridinolin and hydroxyprolin that will also be high if you see the x-ray there will be increased thickness of the skull increase thickness of the skull but is that is called as cotton wool skull now these bones are vascular they demand more blood so what happens is blood of brain is shunted to shunted means spared moved is shunted to bone now that is called as vascular steel syndrome now in the vertebra you get to see something called as paget spine paget spine fine now that is picture frame vertebra now in the later half later part of the disease your patient will get ivory vertebra in the late stage the third stage what happens is that the skull size it goes on increasing every year patient has to buy a new cap so he will buy this cap now this cap automatically adjust to the size of the head automatically adjust to the size of the head what is the name of this cap this cap is called tam o shanter cap or tam o shanter health uh, hat sign dr daniel i welcome you on uh, behalf of all my friends there so most common clinical feature in all phases is the bone pain most common age is around 50 years is around 50 years now if we talk about the most common bone most common bone it is the pelvis and the long bone most common is the femur most common long bone is the femur now due to thickening of the bone cranial nerves may be compressed cranial nerves may be compressed now which cranial nerves are commonly involved two five seven and eight your patient can have hearing loss hearing loss transverse fractures also called as banana fractures are very very common see buddies if we break the banana like this now same way the fracture can occur in bone fracture can occur in bone the transverse fracture the bone biopsy is going to show you mosaic bone disorganized bone yes dr muskanji definitely the splints will keep on coming in the mid also but then we'll uh, we'll revise treatment in the early stage is bisphosphonates in the late stage we'll have to cut the bone that is osteotomy osteotomy teriparatide should not be given because it increases the risk of osteosarcoma it increases the risk of osteosarcoma fine now osteopetrosis last disorder i forgot about this so it is called as marble bone disease it is called as ebber sconberg disease ebber sconberg disease so what is the pathology defective carbonic anhydrase pump where on the osteoclast on the osteoclast autosomal dominant disease 
presence in adult and is mild. Autosomal recessive disease present in children and it is very, very severe. Large amount of bone accumulates and there is no space for bone marrow. No space for bone marrow. Because there is no Spain for, space for bone marrow, blood forms in the liver and spleen. So your patient will have hepatosplenomegaly. Hepato spleno megaly now your uh, patient will have multiple infections and bleeding tendencies bleeding tendencies when we get the x-ray done we get to see Erlen mayer flask deformity this is the Erlen mayer flask and you see what is the bones they look like this, Erlen Mayer flask, Erlen Mayer flask, right? Now, in the x-ray, the cortical bone is only present near intervertebral disc. That is very, very similar to rugger jersey spine, but here we like to call it sandwich vertebrae we like to call it sandwich vertebrae sandwich vertebrae the treatment buddies is stem cell transplant stem cell transplant i'm moving at my own pace my dear friends so if there is anything I mean, uh, if there is anything which I could uh, not make it clear, then please uh, do let me know. When the, well, the time we are shifting, you can always ask me. You can always ask me. Now, let's see a few fractures. Yes, yes, Dr. Karthi ji, haphazard arrangement is called mosaic bone. Now, you see here, let's say, buddies, this is femur. This is tibia, so that means this is knee joint. If you see a small chip of bone over here, if you see a small chip of bone, you see here. Now, at this point, you can see a small chip of bone. Now, this fracture is called C gaunt fracture. This fracture is called C gaunt fracture. C gaunt fracture. Right? Now, the fracture around the ankle. Fracture around the ankle. You see, buddies, if there is fracture of lateral malleolus, also there is fracture of medial malleolus. Your patient has got fracture on both bones. That is called as bimalleolar fracture. Bimalleolar fracture. So the word bi means to bimalleolar fracture. The name is pot fracture. Now, if you see that the posterior part of tibia is also broken, it becomes trimalleolar fracture and the name is now cotton fracture name is now cotton fracture cotton fracture fine now if you get to see such a fracture here in the talus bone now that is called shepherd fracture that is called as shepherd fracture c shepherd fracture that will generally come as an image based question only let me zoom it up a bit see here so you see one part of the bone second part of the bone shepherd fracture shepherd fracture right then telox fracture 
telogs fracture now telogs fracture when you see that the medial part of the bone is fractured medial part of the sorry the it will be the lateral part i'm sorry the lateral part of the bone is fractured that is called as telogs fracture now they will come as an image based question only you have to look for the fracture line and then you have to just identify you have to just identify it we we'll come to this one we'll discuss now if you see a fracture in the femur if you see a fracture in the distal femur now this is called hoffa fracture this is called hoffa fracture hoffa fracture distal femur so hoffa fracture is present at distal femur now what is if you see a fracture in the proximal tibia that is called as bumper fracture that is called as bumper fracture bumper fracture now similarly the jones fracture fifth metatarsal base here if you see a fracture that is called as jones fracture that is called as jones fracture fifth metatarsal fracture that is called as jones fracture now this is an interesting fracture calcaneal fracture is called as lover fracture is called as lover fracture so someone is fleeing from the window fine and the husband of the lady comes out of nowhere so that lover will sustain something called as lover fracture that is called as lover fracture amitraj ji dr amitraj ji thank you so much sustained after jumping from a window lover fracture right now these fractures uh, speaking of the fractures but is if you allow me just two three minutes because you know we are we are discussing fracture so let's quickly see another important fracture another important set of fractures rather i want to call it uh forearm fractures because you know these fractures often they are like very confusing now something called as defense fracture now defense fracture is also called as knight stick fracture so let's say this is going to be your patient he is being hit by a policeman so this stick will hit the ulna of the patient so isolated fracture that means there is no other fracture or dislocation fine no other fracture or dislocation now we have got this fracture montegia fracture dislocation now this was given by giovanni montegia dr giovanni montegia montegia fracture dislocation now often there are many confusing things we have to study these three fractures montegia fracture dislocation galizi fracture dislocation and reverse galizi fracture dislocation now see what is i developed my own mnemonic in the year 2019 elections were held and modi ji one with thumping majority many bad things happened between 2014 to 2019 even then modi ji won because he was close to the hearts of people he was close to the hearts of people when we stand like this it is the ulna which is close to our body so let's say bodies we stand like this so ulna is the bone which is close to our bodies 
So somewhere here must be my heart. If I am standing here, which part of the alna is close to my body? It is the proximal part of alna which is close to my body. So M for Montegia. M for Montegia fracture. Montegia fracture will occur at proximal alna. Now all his political career, Modi ji has done his politics against one family, G for Gandhis. So G for Galizi, which is also known as reverse Montegia. Now this will affect distal radius. Now somebody prompted, prompted one of the Gandhis to be in the line to become Prime Minister. Which Gandhi? R.G. Rahul Gandhi, with all due respect. So, reverse Galizi fracture, it affects the distal ulna. There are other ways to remember also. Multiple mnemonics. GFR, glomerular filtration rate. Galizi fractures radius. Galizi fractures radius. But is when we are reading ABC, Z comes at end. So Galizi will fracture the bone where it ends. That is distal radius. Similarly, Montegia, A, A, A. So ABC starts at A. Montegia fracture will occur the start of the bone, where the bone starts. Proximal, Alna. Magar is another mnemonic. Montegia will fracture the Alna and Galizi will fracture the radius. Similarly, we have got another mnemonic. Grimus. Galizi will fracture radius at inferior most part. Mus. Montegia will fracture the ulna at superior most part. Montegia fracture dislocation. Now you see buddies here, this bone is radius and this bone is ulna. As you can see buddies, there is a fracture over here and you see here, if you see that both the bones are separated away from each other. Both the bones, if you see, are separated away from each other. So as they are separated away from each other, we get to see a dislocation. We get to see a dislocation. So this is Montegia fracture dislocation. Montegia fracture dislocation, that means fracture of proximal ulna plus dislocation of radio ulnar joint. Dislocation of radio ulnar joint. Similarly, Galizi fracture was given by Ricardo Galizi. This is important probably for INE, CT, not even for NEET. Galizi fracture dislocation. So, distal radius fracture with radio ulnar dislocation. Now, you see here, buddies, again the same thing. This is radius, this is ulna and as you can see both of the bones are separated from each other, are separated from each other. Galizi, fracture, dislocation. Now the same fracture is also known as reverse Montegia, reverse Montegia. Then we have what is Galizi equivalent fracture. Both the bones, both the bones are fractured, but there is no dislocation. Both the bones are fractured, 
but there is no dislocation. Galizi equivalent fracture. Galizi Galizi equivalent fracture. Both the bone will be fractured, but there will be no dislocation. So treatment of all of these in adults, open reduction and internal fixation. While in the children, we'll use POP cast. We can use POP cast. Yes, 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 Dr. Karthik ji. If Dr. Karthik ji, listen to me carefully, buddy. If there is no dislocation and a fracture of ulna that is called as night stick fracture. If there is fracture of ulna and dislocation of radio ulnar joint, only then we will call it a Montagia fracture. Only then we will call it Montagia fracture. Right, buddies? Speaking of that, I know this is slightly irksome for you. This is slightly difficult for you. But let's see the next fracture, Collie's fracture. Now you see, buddies, outer part of any bone is cortical, blue colored. Inner part of any bone is cancellous, yellow colored thing which I have shown over here. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. You see. This point, this line is at cortico cancellous junction. So, if a fracture occurs over here, this fracture is called Collie's fracture. Collie's fracture. Whereas Galizi fracture will occur at distal one-third of radius. Collie's fracture will occur at distal most part of radius. Distal most part of radius. That is the difference here. That is the difference here. So, if the Galizi fracture is occurring here, then Collie's fracture would be occurring at the distal most part that is the difference what is the mechanism the mechanism is fall on the outstretched hand in elderly now this mechanism push fall on the outstretched hand in children it will cause supracondylar fracture of humerus in young adults it will cause scaphoid fracture in elderly it will cause Collie's fracture. Please tell me, uh, please allow me to call you by your names. Dr. Karthik Madhavji, Dr. Amitra Jananji, Dr. Muskanji, Dr. Gaganji, Dr. Priyanka ji, Dr. Daniel, Dr. Shivani, uh, Dr. Meet Patel ji. Fush, can it cause anything else apart from these three fractures which I have mentioned? Can it cause anything else? But is it can also cause posterior dislocation of shoulder. It can also cause posterior dislocation of shoulder. So if your patient has college fracture, he or she will come to your office like this. He or she will come to your office like this. Right? Now. First of all, you see what is the different names of the different surfaces. It's very difficult, but if you understand it once, it will be super easy for you. So let's say my hand is like this. This is what you get to see. So the normal position of the body is like this. So what you see right now is anterior. Bhimji, I can uh, enlarge up my image. I think I can. I have to image enlarge karna chahata. I think I can. Oh, 
छोटे होते हनुमान ही बड़े होते जाते जैसे महाभारत वाले ओह यू शिफ्ट टू दैट ओके राइट फिर इसको छोटा ही कर देते हैं डन आई एम विजिबल ऑन फुल स्क्रीन तो उस पर तो कुछ और आ रहा है लैग है थोड़ा सा मैं छोटा सा ही आ रहा हूँ भाई फुल स्क्रीन पे आ सकता हूँ मैं ओके यस ओके नाउ सी वट इज वॉट यू गेट टू सी राइट नाउ This is the anterior surface of my body. Anterior. Now, this anterior is also called as volar. Is also called as volar. Also called as ventral. Also called as flexor. So, anterior, ventral, volar, flexor. What you see right now, that is called as dorsal, extensor, posterior. Fine. so anterior ventral volar flexor dorsiterior extensor fine the different surfaces the different surfaces of the body fine okay bhim ji i want to get back to my original size bhim ji भाई नाम उनका भी मैं बड़ा मैं हो गया अरे डॉक्टर पारस इज देयर डॉक्टर पारस रिमेंबर टुमारो वी हैव गॉट द लाउड म्यूजिक अलर्ट डॉक्टर आर्यन जी जस्ट रिमेंबर जो होना है भाई वो होना है Fine. Don't think too much. Just keep on studying. Okay. Now you see what is. And, कौन सा भाव हमारे डॉक्टर आर्यन जी. We have got uh, some meditation center. Uh, we have got some uh, meditation sessions at my house on my rooftop. Doctor Paras will be there. I will be there. Maybe we can give you some sessions over uh, a cup of. coffee may be fine you're most welcome tomorrow <laughs> okay so the dorsal surface is also known as posterior surface is also known as extensor surface right the opposite side is called palmar surface volar surface ventral surface anterior surface flexor surface fine गगन जी देखो उसके बाद तो हम मेडिटेशन ही करते हैं द सेशन इज गोइंग टू स्टार्ट एट एट ओ क्लॉक सो नाउ यू नो वट काइंड ऑफ मेडिटेशन दैट वुड बी नाउ हेयर इन कॉलेज फ्रैक्चर योर पेशेंट विल हैव सुपिनेशन ऑफ द रेस्ट लेट्रल डेविएशन ऑफ द फिंगर and the fracture will be impacted posterior displacement you'll get to see posterior displacement of the distal fragment posterior displacement of the distal fragment right okay what is the treatment treatment is propaganda what you do here is you will fix it in the hand shake cast hand shake cast clinical features are slip treatment is propaganda from supination you will turn it to pronation pronation your patient came like this dorsal angulation you will convert it to palmar angulation palmar angulation 
from lateral deviation you will convert it to ulnar deviation let me show you the picture all this is done in the handshake cast now if you see what is the fingers they are moving like this that is palmar deviation now the fingers they are moving like this that is ulnar deviation ulnar deviation now this all has to be done in the hand shake cast remember buddies let me just shade it up so you see buddies this yellow colored thing is the distal fragment now this blue colored thing this is the proximal fragment now if you see it correctly buddies the distal fragment has gone posteriorly distal fragment has gone dorsally towards the extensor surface if you don't do the correct treatment the union will occur here only union will occur here only see buddies the distal fragment has gone posteriorly the union will occur here only and your patient will have dinner fork deformity dinner fork deformity which looks somewhat like this you see the dinner fork deformity this occurs when the distal fragment goes posteriorly at that time your patient will suffer from dinner fork deformity remember the most common complication is not dinner fork deformity most common complication here is finger stiffness now the other common complication is extensor pollicis longus extensor pollicis longus tendon will break now for need pg you need to remember that this is a very very late complication this is not an immediate or early complication this is a late complication rupture of extensor pollicis longus this is a late complication now dinner fork deformity is a very bad disabling deformity very bad and disabling deformity you need to correct it with the help of darach operation with the help of darach operation now smith fracture is totally reverse your patient will come to you like this pronation palmar angulation and ulnar deviation of the fingers the treatment is from pronation will convert to supination fine from ulnar deviation will convert to lateral deviation from palmar angulation will convert it to posterior shift patient came like this will convert it to something like this even then there are chances of your patient having deformity what is the name of that deformity garden spade deformity garden spade deformity dr karthik ji <laughs> it is daraj now dr karthik says dra now at around 8 o'clock don't say the word dra because you know the sound of brua brua comes in my mind at the time of 8 pm once again a kind and humble request i was born and brought up in amritsar so 8 pm is a very dangerous time for me now you see her hair buddies that is the first fracture which we have seen so in the first image everything is normal in the second image you see there is a fracture of distal radius in the third image also you see there is a fracture of distal radius right now if 
there is distal fracture and the bone goes like this dorsal angulation your patient has collies fracture if distal fracture and bone goes like this your patient has smith fracture smith fracture so collies fracture on my right hand smith fracture on my left hand fine collies fracture on my right hand smith fracture on my left hand so, you see, the blue colored thing is the fracture line. You see, it is very far away from the wrist joint, very far away from the wrist joint. So, that means the fracture is extra articular, extra articular. That means the fracture line is away from wrist joint. Now, you see here, let's say buddies, this is the wrist joint. And suppose this is the fracture line. Now, if you see it correctly, buddies, the fracture line is meeting the joint. So that means the fracture is intra-articular, right, is intra-articular. I want you to watch this image from Radiopedia, then we will watch a table, then we will watch a table, right? Now you see here, the yellow colored line which I have drawn is the fractured line and the blue colored line which I have drawn, this is the wrist joint, this line is the wrist joint. Now you see here, the fracture line is far from the wrist joint. So, this is an extra articular fracture. Plus, you can see there is dorsal angulation. So, this is a collies fracture collies fracture how does this occur by foosh fall on the outstretched hand now you see here buddies this is the joint line this is the fracture line so you see here the angulation is volar mechanism is inward turned hands inward turned hands so this is a smith fracture smith fracture now the third fracture again you see buddies here the hand is going like this so the dorsal angulation but you see the fracture line touches wrist joint. So, this kind of fracture is intra-articular. What is the name of this fracture? Dorsal button. Same, I mean similar. So, we have got volar angulation. Now, this is the joint line. This is fracture line. So, but is what kind of fracture is this? Volar button. We also call it reverse button. Reverse button. Reverse button. So, if you can take a screenshot, my kind and humble request, please take screenshot only if you have not understood this particular concept fine please do take screenshot i mean i'll share the pdf but then you also take the screenshot this particular black colored image take a picture or take a screenshot that's, that's super important okay
Yes. So let's say if the styloid process of the radius is fractured. If the styloid process, this is the styloid process. If the styloid process of the radius is fractured and there is no displacement, hand remains straight in the neutral position. That is called as Schoffer fracture. Schoffer fracture also known as Hutchison fracture also known as backfire fracture. Remember in the old times we had to start the cars like this. We had to start the cars like this. Fine here. So what would happen sometimes the handle would hit the radius so bad that the styloid process would break. Styloid process would break. So if there is fracture of the styloid process it is called as backfire fracture and if the medial side of the radius breaks down. So what do you see? First image everything normal. Second image lateral side is fractured. Third image medial side of the radius is fractured. So you see if the medial side of the radius is fractured. So you see this is lateral side. You see this is medial side. Fine. So if the medial side is fractured buddies it is called as die punch fracture. Die punch fracture. This is how it occurs. Die punch fracture. Die punch fracture like this. So on the first image you can see something. You see the styloid process is fractured. So this first image what you see is called Hutchison fracture backfire fracture. Now in the second image you see the lateral side is okay but the medial side is fractured. So this is called die punch fracture. Die punch fracture. Die punch fracture. So scaphoid fracture. Remember scaphoid is the most common carpal bone to undergo fracture. Most common carpal bone to undergo fracture. Most common carpal bone to undergo dislocation. Most common carpal bone to undergo dislocation. What is that? That is called as lunate. That is called as lunate. And what do you get to see here? You get to see spilled teacup sign spilled teacup sign immobilization in the cast dr karthik madhav ji immobilization in the cast you'll just do immobilization nothing else no named cast is used scaphoid fracture mechanism of action foosh in the young population so she is having foosh Fall on the outstretch hand. Fall on the outstretch hands. Fine. Fall on the outstretch hand. Now, what is most common site is the waist in children. Most common site is distal pole. Clinical feature. Uh, fullness. That means swelling in the anatomical snuff box anatomical snuff box your patient will have pain on gripping the object pain on gripping the object treatment is immobilization in the glass holding cast how will you identify glass holding cast Thumb will always be covered. Thumb will always be covered. Thumb will always be covered. If the fracture is displaced, then the treatment is open reduction internal fixation. That means you will do surgery by Herbert screw. This is what we call Herbert screw. 
Herbert screw. Investigation of choice is MRI because the fracture may not be visible on X-ray. Why? Because edema around the bone will keep both the fragments together and sticking to each other. Now, suppose MRI is not available. You will get three X-ray views, AP view, lateral view and oblique view. Oblique view is considered best. Complication, non-union. Why non-union? Because there is poor vascularity and avascular necrosis. Avascular necrosis will not affect the distal part. It will affect the proximal part. It will affect the proximal part. Avascular necrosis. Fine. The distal part will be saved, but the proximal part will undergo avascular necrosis. Will undergo avascular necrosis. Fine. Now, which other bones? undergo avascular necrosis remember talus fine and neck of femur they also undergo avascular necrosis now avascular necrosis also occurs in the dislocation of hip it also occurs in parthes disease it also occurs in slipped capital femoral epiphysis. Slipped capital femoral epiphysis. Another one or two minutes and then we'll take a 15 minutes break. Now, Bennett fracture. The correct name is Bennett fracture dislocation. It is the most common fracture of base of thumb and is dislocated. See here. So this is the base of the thumb and it is dislocated because it is pulled by this muscle. Which muscle? Abductor pollicis longus muscle. Abductor pollicis longus muscle fine abductor pollicis longus muscle now this muscle is a notorious muscle now if this muscle is inflamed it can give rise to a disease called decurvain tenosynovitis decurvain tenosynovitis now what is b for bennett B for by. By means two. So here there will be two fragments. Two fragments. Similarly, the next fracture, Rolando fracture, is commutated fracture. Remember this movie, R R R movie. So R is written three times. So there are minimum three fragments minimum three fragments one two three minimum three fragments fine you see here here also one two three minimum three fragments rolando fracture now boxer fracture boxer fracture is fracture of fifth metacarpal neck fifth metacarpal neck boxer fracture fifth metacarpal neck mallet finger it is also called as baseball finger it is also called as baseball finger so when the ball hits what happens is that the extensor tendon is broken into two pieces. Extensor tendon is broken into two 
pieces like this. Extensor tendon will be broken into two pieces, right? So this is the first piece. This is the second piece. So it starts looking like a hammer. Now, what is the treatment? Immobilization in hyperextension. So one of my doctor friend, he mentioned that please show us splints. I'm showing the splints in between the lectures also. And in the end, we'll do a quick revision of all the splints. Don't worry. Now, this is called as stacks splint, stacks splint. So you see the finger is in hyper extension hyper extension this is called as stacks splint fine now next is jersey fingers so you see this is your patient patient the man runs away the inside of the hand of your patient will sustain injury will sustain injury so what is that rupture of flexor digitorum profundus tendon flexor digitorum profundus tendon right now the clinical feature flexion treatment surgery is preferred then otherwise you can use something which is called as frog splint something which is called as frog splint please allow me to quickly show you the frog splint see this is how a frog splint looks like frog splint frog splint I i'll do that buddy dr navneet ji i'll do that this is how the frog splint looks like, right? Frog splint, <laughs> okay. Coming back, skier thumb and gamekeeper thumb. So, buddy, skier thumb is acute injury and gamekeeper thumb is chronic injury to ulnar collateral ligament ulnar collateral ligament see so this is a radial collateral ligament this is ulnar collateral ligament ulnar collateral ligament radial collateral ulnar collateral ligament Right, buddies? You see here, gamekeeper thumb is chronic injury. Chronic injury. So, you see here, in old time, the hunters, they used to kill the wild animals. They used to call wild animals game. So, they will break their neck with the hands. Inside of the hand would get damaged right now made lung deformity not very important club hand is absent or hypoplastic radius now what is the treatment there you can do pale operation pale operation not very important syndactyly is fusion of the fingers index finger middle finger ring finger little finger so fusion of the finger is most commonly between middle and ring finger. Polydactyly means more than five digits. Now, A is more common. This preaxial. That means more finger on radial side. More finger on the radial side. Rithik Roshan sahab, remember two thumbs and if you have more finger on the ulnar side, not important. Now, this man has got two middle fingers, scary. 
sprangle deformity so sprangle deformity there is a band between band between cervical spine and scapula cervical spine and scapula right so you see here this is cervical spine and this is scapula now this is characteristically seen in lip pill fail syndrome what is the treatment surgery at three to eight years of age pulled elbow what is the other name nurse made elbow fine it is most commonly done at I mean, it occurs at two to five years of age, two to five years of age. The child will present like this in the prone position. You just have to make it supine, just have to make it supine, pulled elbow. Now, buddy, what happens is many of you, they don't come back after break. So bonus, just 30 seconds more. And let's see the most common joints involved. Just 30 seconds more, then we'll take a break. So most common joint involved in rheumatoid arthritis, metacarpophalangeal joint. And this joint is spared in osteoarthritis, not involved in osteoarthritis, not involved in osteoarthritis. Now, most common joint in osteoarthritis, knee joint in India, hip joint around the world hip joint around the world please tell me which joint is spared in rheumatoid arthritis now in gout metatarsophalangeal joint of the great toe is most commonly affected i'll repeat my question which joint is spared in rheumatoid arthritis now in septic arthritis which includes gonococcal and syphilitic arthritis. Also in pseudogout, hemophilia, it is the knee joint which is most commonly affected. Very good, Dr. Muskanji. So in rheumatoid arthritis, DIP, distal interphalangeal joint is spared. Now, in Paget disease, most common bone involved is pelvis followed by femur. Now, in osteomyelitis, most common is lower end of femur. Now, in rheumatoid arthritis, most common extra articular manifestation is subcutaneous nodules which are seen at extensor surface. Most commonly, they are seen at olecranon, right? Most common pulmonary manifestation is pleuritis. Most common cardiac manifestation is pericarditis. Most common valvular anomaly is mitral regurgitation. Most common hematological anomaly is normocytic, normochromic anemia. Most common part of spine involved, cervical spine. Most common cause of death, cardiopulmonary complication, that is rheumatoid arthritis for you that is rheumatoid arthritis for you pericarditis i mean uh, we, we, we will read rheumatoid arthritis we will read more of rheumatoid arthritis very very shortly but uh, for this can you allow me to take a quick short break of around 15 minutes then we'll uh... okay so uh, 8 15 by my watch We'll see each other at 8.30 p.m. The class has to end at 10 o'clock, don't worry. So, can you allow me to take a quick short break of around 10-15 minutes? We'll assemble again. The class, uh, Bhimji, without breaking the link, can we continue the class at 8.30? Yes. 
So can I get one or two yes from you guys if we can take a break right now? I mean, if you guys are still watching. So 10, 15 minutes break, I'll assemble, uh, I mean, I'll be here at my seat at 8.30 sharp. Right, thank you so much, buddies.
डन जी राइट बडी सो एम बैक एज प्रोमिस बैक ऑन टाइम नाउ rheumatoid arthritis we'll study the different type of arthritis four different type of arthritis and after that we'll see tenosynovitis different kind of tenosynovitis right so can you allow me to start now first we'll start with rheumatoid arthritis fine rheumatoid arthritis is chronic non suppurative non suppurative means there is no pus at all no pus at all now most common age of starting is 50 20 to 50 years and it is more common in females now it is associated with hla dr1 and dr w4 now some of the virus like epstein bar virus are also associated with this kind of arthritis associated with this kind of arthritis now what is what is the pathology pathology is body starts thinking immunoglobulin g as the antigen and it will develop igm antibody against immunoglobulin g so the immune complexes are formed immune complexes are formed and they will activate the complement the inflammation will start fine so interleukin and tumor necrosis factor alpha these are the main cytokines these are the main cytokines initial inflammation is at synovium and the synovium is converted to panus synovium is converted to panus just give me a minute so you see here ig g becomes antigen and igm it becomes the antibody igm becomes the antibody against the igg and the immune complexes form immune complexes form immune complexes form right now these immune complexes they activate the complement they activate the complement now first of all what will happen the synovium which is very thin synovium which is very moist it becomes panus now the panus is dry panus is rough panus is inflamed kind of synovium is inflamed kind of synovium right your patient develops multiple deformities your patient develops multiple deformities now one of the deformity is swan neck deformity swan neck deformity so what is there in the swan neck this is swan neck deformity so you get to see flexion at the dip joint and you get to see hyper extension at the pip joint fine you see flexion at the dip joint and hyper extension at the pip joint hyper extension at the pip joint then we have got bottonnier deformity flexion at the pip joint and hyper extension at the dip joint hyper extension at dip joint then we have got something called as hammer toe hammer toe fine so this is hammer toe flexion deformity of the feet flexion deformity of the feet now somebody who is asking for a lift is called hitch hiker is called hitch hiker somebody who is asking for a lift is called hitch hiker now your patient will develop a thumb 
which looks like this. This is called as hitchhiker thumb. Hitchhiker thumb. Hitchhiker thumb. These are the different deformities. Then your patient will have rheumatoid nodule. Now they are seen at extensor surfaces of the body and the most common site is olecranon. Most common site is olecranon. Most common site is olecranon. Piano key sign, radius and ulna can move separately and independently away from each other. Separately and independently away from each other. Fine. Now, close this. So you see here. Most common joint, as I told you, is the metacarpophalangeal joint. Most common pattern is symmetrical polyarthritis. That means the joints are involved in a symmetrical fashion. If I am your patient, left side wrist is involved, right side will also be involved. Fine. So, symmetrical polyarthritis poly means minimum four joints must be inflamed minimum four joints must be inflamed now the less common joint are hip joint temporomandibular joint rarely affected joints are cervical spine here your patient will complain of severe headache severe headache lungs your patient will have interstitial fibrosis eyes your patient will have conjunctivitis sicca simply called as dry eyes pleura your patient will have pleuritis pleuritis your patient will also have myocarditis due to ongoing inflammation ESR C reactive protein levels will be very very high very very high your patient also will have PUO paraxia of unknown origin deformities we have already seen now RA factor what is RA factor? IgM antibody against FC portion of IgG. If the disease is waxing, that means patient is worsening, then RA factor levels are high. If the disease is waning, that means the patient is improving. RA factor levels are low. It is non-specific. What is specific? Anti cyclic citrullinated peptide antibodies, or it is also called as anti citrullinated. peptide antibodies. Now on x-ray, the first sign is juxta articular osteopenia. Around the joints, you will get to see decreased bone density. Decreased bone density, you will get to see around the joint, around the joints. Then what is the treatment? Treatment, NASAIDs and DAMARDs. Now, these are the mnemonics for disease-modifying anti-rheumatoid drugs. Many thanks to the owner of this picture. Now, that's another mnemonic. Eliza, please give her methotrexate. Why? Because methotrexate is the drug of choice. Why her? Because the disease is more common in females. Now, rheumatoid arthritis is very common in Felty 
syndrome. What is the mnemonic of Felty syndrome? Splenomegaly, anemia, neutropenia, thrombocytopenia and rheumatoid arthritis. Santa is the mnemonic. That's what we have already studied about rheumatoid arthritis. Now we move to the next type of arthritis, osteoarthritis. Now you see what is osteoarthritis is common in males who are obese. Obese means BMI is more than 30. BMI is more than 30. Fine. Now, primary osteoarthritis, when the cartilage is destroyed by age. Secondary osteoarthritis, when the cartilage is destroyed by some other disease. Fine. And not by aging. For example, the cartilage may be destroyed by septic arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis and intraarticular fracture. Now, this can affect any joint. Whereas the most common joint in primary osteoarthritis is knee joint in India. Why? Because of Indian toilets and because of our habit of sitting on the ground. That is called as squatting. Clinical feature pain. Clinical feature your patient can develop something which is called as genu verum. Now, the metacarpophalangeal joint, as I told you, is spared. It is not involved. Proximal interphalangeal joint, as I told you, is inflamed. And there is a swelling, which is called as bouchard node. Distal interphalangeal joint is inflamed. It has got a swelling called as Hepburden node. Hepburden node. On x-ray, you see here, but is this is the medial side, this is the lateral side. Now, if you see that the joint space is reduced, joint space is reduced. If you see over here, the joint space is maintained. So, x-ray shows asymmetric loss of joint space. Now, x-ray also shows osteophytes. X-ray also shows osteophytes. 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 You see here. Osteophyte. Artho. The word artho means joint, scopy means to see, to take a camera inside the joint and see what is happening. Arthroscopy, what does it show? It shows loose bodies of broken cartilage. Now, the most common cause of loose bodies in the joint in elderly is osteo arthritis. Otherwise, the most common cause is osteochondritis. Treatment, weight reduction, nasades and chondroitin sulfate. Now, the gold standard treatment is joint replacement. Gold standard treatment is joint replacement. Joint replacement. Right? But if we now move to the second last arthritis, psoriatic arthritis. Now, it is called arthritis mutilans. Destroys the bone so badly. Male, female incidence is equal. Male, female incidence is equal. Now, but is, this is also associated with HLA B27. HLA B27. Now, what do we get to see? We get to see silvery scale on the skin. Oncolysis means nail destruction. We get to see sausage fingers. We get to see 
sausage fingers that means the bones of the digits are swollen we get to see something which is called as opera glass hand opera glass hands so opera glass hands what are they they are the skin folds skin folds opera glass hand osteolysis there will be bone destruction bone destruction will appear like this so when you see this bone destruction you see in the first image everything is normal 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 and if you see in the second image the bone is destroyed bone is destroyed this is called as pencil in the cup deformity this is pencil pencil in the cup deformity pencil in the cup deformity is seen on x-ray now we also get to see telescoping of the fingers Dr. Gaganji, that's a misconception. That is an absolute misconception that uh, HLA-B27 is associated with uh, ankylosing spondylitis only. It is associated with multiple other diseases. It is associated with multiple other diseases. Let me show you. Just give me a minute. See here, HLA B27, it is associated with ankylosing spondylitis. It is associated with reactive arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, fine. So it is not only associated with ankylosing spondylitis, but it is associated with multiple other disease. For example, it is associated with inflammatory bowel disease. It is associated with uh, uveitis reactive arthritis right oh yes 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 ah uh, yes you're right huh yes it is associated with ankylosing spondylitis in 90 percent of the cases that way dr gagan you are absolutely correct now see this is silvery scales on the skin in psoriasis oncolysis destruction of the nails oncolysis now, telescoping. You see, this is how telescope is. Tube number 1, 2, 3. When we are done using it, we will close it and it will become small in size. See this video. When you pull, the finger becomes large. When you close, when you leave, the finger becomes small. Watch it again. This is called telescoping. Telescoping. Right? Now, the hands, they show skin folds. Now, these skin folds, they are called opera glass hand. Opera glass hands. Opera glass hand. In psoriatic arthritis, we use Casper criteria. You know, you don't need to remember the details. Just remember the name. Casper criteria is used for making the diagnosis of psoriatic arthritis. Casper criteria. Casper criteria. Now, here, you know, the treatment which you can use is first you can use nasades fine then you can use immunosuppressants like cyclosporin like aza thioprin aza thioprin you can use cytokine blockers like ethanercept ethanercept 
you can also use in flexi map you can also use in flexi map and then another group of drug which you can use is the steroids now with this we move to the next thing there ankylosing spondylitis you know it is seen in young males it is seen in young males now 90 percent of the cases they are associated with hla b 27 fine now the word is ankylosis ankylosing now what is ankylosis pathological fusion of the bones in a joint that is ankylosis arthrodosis fusion of the bones deliberately deliberately done by the surgeon deliberately done by the surgeon now earliest joint involved here is the sacroiliac joint sacroiliac joint uh, dr akanksha i believe i'll be able to cover uh, the important topics by around let's say 10 o'clock fine if they want me i'll take another one now what do we get to see on x-ray we get to see squaring of vertebra now just as an mcq point what we get to see in hemophilia in hemophilia we'll get to see something called as squaring of patella squaring of patella now see buddies here you look at this vertebra you see the anterior border is straight this is called squaring of vertebra now if you see correctly buddies in this vertebra the anterior border is slightly concave so this vertebra is absolutely normal whereas the affected vertebra the anterior border is absolutely straight anterior border is absolutely straight this is called yes buddies of course of course of course i'll discuss i mean if the time permits us and i see if i can find the pyq I, i'll discuss the, them here only Are buddies i can do anything you guys say <laughs> you just tell me and i'll do it now you see that is what we get to see this is called as bamboo spine fusion of all the vertebrae now inflamed vertebra they heal by calcification right now here something characteristic you see what is this is the anterior part of spine and this is posterior part what is present in the posterior part of spine in the posterior part of spine there is a ligament called supraspinous ligament supraspinous ligament dr karthik ji next topic is tumors only i'll try to make it perfectly simple for you absolutely simple i'll try to make for you 15 minutes topic very quickly we'll cover now, if you get to see a white line in the center, if you get to see a white line in the center, that is called as dagger sign. Calcification of the supraspinous ligament is called dagger sign. If you get to see a white line on the sides, if you get to see white lines on the side of vertebra white line on the side of vertebra this is called as railroad sign and if you get to see both white line on the side as well as a white line in the middle that is called as trolley track sign trolley track sign now 
you see it starts at the level of sacro iliac joint right okay now what is the name of the investigation if the sacroiliac joint has to be tested it is called ganselan test what are the other test figure of four test also called as patrick test also called as faber test also called as faber test right now it has got many extra articular manifestation like uveitis irido cyclitis inflammatory bowel disease cataract and glaucoma cataract and glaucoma right okay so you people are uh, worried about tumors so let's see the tumor only let's see the tumors only now what is worrying about the tumor they ask you first of all they'll ask you the site that what is the common site of the tumor then they will ask you the typical radiological picture they'll ask you the typical radiological pictures just give me a minute and we'll do that don't worry now i totally and fully agree with the dr karthik yes dr roy the old gamer but he, that is why it is called as bamboo spine now i fully agree now you see uh, dr uh, karthik ji see th this is the way to remember the site of origin so you have got these two mnemonics there they are present in the notes fine so geomed is one mnemonic joint cell tumor arises from epiphysis yes 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 dr roy exactly the same so patrick test uh, just give me a minute i'll show you here only what is this figure of four test also called as patrick test i'll show you here how do we perform that see here this is how we perform faber test also called as patrick test or figure of four test we make a figure of four and then we press like this so you see this is flexion abduction and external rotation faber test dr roy the old gamer what this one is for you this is how we are performing faber test also called as patrick test also called as figure of four test Now, lumbar spine, you know, uh, the patient will not be able to bend at the lumbar spine. So, we will test it with the help of SCOBER test. SCOBER test. Okay. So, I fully agree with the Dr. Karthik that understanding the tumors is a bit difficult. It's a tricky thing. Now, osteochondroma, it arises from metaphysis evings tumor it arises from diaphysis fine demo ecg what arises from diaphysis evings sarcoma what arises from metaphysis osteosarcoma and osteochondroma what arises from epiphysis codman tumor chondrosarcoma and giant cell tumor that's a mnemonic yes 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 exactly dr roy now this is also there in my notes from by age you can do the quick revision now buddy even then the problem is what dr karthik has mentioned that uh, the tumors that they all look the same they all look the same especially the benign bone tumors they all look the same fine we'll try to differentiate them now first of all buddies most common bone tumor is secondary cancer secondary cancers from other organs secondary cancer 
from other organ. In the males, they commonly come from prostate and in the female, they commonly come from breast. Now, what is some of the cancers? Secondary cancer, they are osteoblastic. That means they help in bone formation. What cancers? Cancer prostate, carcinoid and medullary carcinoma of the thyroid. Whenever they reach the bone, they help in bone formation. Osteolytic, they destroy the bone. Remember follicular carcinoma, it forms pulsatile secondaries, pulsatile secondaries, very vascular secondaries. The bone is totally destroyed. Carcinoma breast, 80% are lytic, 20% are blastic, right? In 20% patient, it will be blastic. Now, cancers, they are rapidly growing tissue, so they prefer to stay near the source of blood supply. That's why the most common site is dorso, lumbar spine. So, buddy, here, T for tumor, T for tuberculosis. Both of them, they are commonly seen at dorso lumbar spine, right? But tumor is seen posteriorly, tuberculosis is seen anteriorly. In tumor, the intervertebral disc is preserved. In tuberculosis, the intervertebral disc is destroyed. That is the difference between tumor and tuberculosis. Difference between tumor and tuberculosis. Now, some cancer, there is a mnemonic. Now, my kind and humble request, don't elaborate the word BBC. In our time, the BBC just meant British Broadcasting Corporation. Now, BBC goes everywhere. Their mnemonics, they go everywhere. Now, yeah, so carcinoma bronchus, carcinoma bladder, carcinoma colon, they can go to any bone. They are so aggressive that they will reach anywhere. They will reach anywhere. Now, so most common primary malignant bone tumor, that means arising from the bone only, arising from the bone. Now, this has got to be multiple myeloma, multiple myeloma. Most common bone tumor of non-hematopoietic, that means not arising from the bone marrow, not arising from the bone marrow. So, most common is osteosarcoma, second most common chondrosarcoma, third most common Ewing sarcoma, Ewing sarcoma. So, we'll start with osteochondroma. Why? Because this is considered to be most common benign bone tumor. Dr. Karthik ji, see this is epiphysis, this is metaphysis, this is diaphysis. The tumor is arising from diaphysis like a stalk like a tree. So, at least this one you will be able to identify. Fine, this one you will be able to identify. Now, it is associated with Masada syndrome. You need to remember it only if you are appearing for need PG. Treatment is excision. Now, N chondroma. N means inside. So, inside the bone if there is a tumor. N chondroma. So, it is the most common benign tumor of hand bones. Most common benign tumor of hand bones, right? Now, what is it? It is associated with Mafuki syndrome and Ollier disease. Now, what do you get to see here? You get to see O ring sign. What is O ring sign? 
Now you see, you will see a very thin white line. Very thin white line where at the metaphysis very thin white line at the metaphysis in long bones o ring sign right osteoma is just bone overgrowth so let's say if the skull my skull suppose is like this Very bad. So, the skull of your patient would be like this. So, there will be just a swelling, just a swelling. Now, you see here, just a swelling, just a small bony swelling. That is called as osteoma, bone overgrowth. Nothing needs to be done. It might block a sinus. Then you will do surgery. Now, osteoid osteoma, it is considered to be most common, true, benign bone tumor. Now, it is seen in the teenage and early 20s. Now, location, you remember, you don't remember, that's perfectly okay. Just remember that it is present at diaphysis. And the typical x-ray picture, you will get to see thick, thick white periphery and a dark center. See buddies. So, this is what you get to see, thick white periphery and you get to see dark center. Now, this patient will have pain which is so mild that it does not require higher painkiller. It is just re relieved by nasades. Now, this will form the body of question. Clinical question will definitely include this. That pain is relieved by nasades. Now, osteoblastoma is benign but aggressive. Now, it is more than 2 cm in size and is rapidly expanding. There will be no pain relief with nasades. Treatment is marginal excision. You have to remove normal tissue also. Normal tissue also. Osteoclastoma. So, what is osteoclastoma? This uh, question they have been asking for several years now. Several years. Every time at least one or two questions are there. So, most common age 20 to 40 years. Most common age is 20 to 40 year most common site is epiphysis of femur epiphysis of femur now there are five e's it will be present at the epiphysis not at diaphysis eccentric it will be present on one side and not in the center. Expensile, rapidly increasing in size. Eggshell cracking, it makes the bone very, very thin. End block excision, complete removal is the treatment. Now, X-ray will show soap bubble appearance. You see, at this point, the bone has become so thin. It is very similar to egg shell. Very similar to egg shell. Now, this is important in the scenario based question. Bone biopsy finding. Multiple giant cells with 40 to 50 nucleus will be seen. Now, 
the simple bone cyst. But if what is cyst? A fluid filled swelling is called cyst. Now, blood, white blood cells, anything. So, what, what all things can form a cyst in the bone? First, the, the mnemonic is beach. Brody, abscess, eosinophilic granuloma, enchondroma, and chondroblastoma. Now, these, this, you know, table is important only for neat PG. What all things can form cyst? Now, what do you see on x-ray? You see on x-ray something called as fallen leaf sign, which is also called as trap door sign, also called as trap door sign. So what do you get to see that at this point in the bone, there will be a liquid filled cavity and there will be a bone fragment. There will be a bone fragment which has fallen from the top, which has fallen from the top and this is called as fallen leaf sign. Just do the excision. Aneurysmal bone cyst. Now, aneurysmal bone cyst is a slightly problematic tumor. It's a slightly problematic tumor. 10 to 20 years. It is commonly seen at tibia. It is commonly seen at tibia and where it is seen at metaphysis. Now, this point is important not only for neat PG, but uh, INECT also, USP6 gene mutation. Now, what happens here? There is increased production of this enzyme, matrix metalloprotease. So, the bone is destroyed. Bone is destroyed. Now, you get to see a multiple septate appearance in the metaphysis. See, like this, multiple septate appearance. Now, septate, let me show you. You see this line. You see this line. Septate. So, multiple fiber-like things. Multiple soap bubble. You get to see multiple soap bubble seen at the metaphysis seen at the metaphysis treatment is wide excision or sclerotherapy wide excision or sclerotherapy now what is osteosarcoma is the most common primary malignant tumor of non hematopoietic origin Non-hematopoietic origin means not arising from bone marrow. Now, it is the most common radiation induced bone tumor. Most common radiation induced bone tumor. Right? Now, it is the most common tumor which is malignant most common malignant bone tumor in children it is the most common radio resistant most common radio resistant tumor of the bone now it is seen in the male so most common location is metaphysis of distal femur metaphysis of distal femur right now the gene mutation associated this is important 
P53, TP53 and hereditary RB gene mutation. Now the periosteum is lifted up. But you see this is the lifted up periosteum. Now what are these? Sharpie fibers. So the bone grows along Sharpie fibers. Bone grows along Sharpie fibers giving rise to sunburst appearance. Giving rise to sunburst appearance. There is something called as sunburst appearance. Now sunburst appearance is a type of periosteal reaction. Is a type of periosteal reaction. Now let's say buddy this is the bone and T stands for tumor. This blue colored thing let's say is the periosteum. Now these fibers let's say are sharpie fibers. So periosteal stem cell they will try to stop the tumor. So these periosteal stem cells they appear as sunburst appearance, sunburst appearance. Sometimes the tumor is so aggressive that periosteum is just lifted up. The stem cells don't form any new bone. This is called as cord man triangle. This is called as cord man triangle. Cord man triangle. Right? Periosteum is just lifted up. Stem cells don't form any bone. Don't form any bone. Now, buddy, this is important when we start studying clinical MCQs. You will get to see nuclear pleomorphism. That means nuclei of multiple shape. Hyperchromatic nuclei. That means rapidly dividing nucleus. Treatment is neoadjuvant chemotherapy and surgery. Chemotherapy is given first because most of the tumors, most of the tumors are metastatic. Where does the metastatic go? Commonly it goes to the lungs. Commonly it goes to the lungs. Then you do the surgery. Then you can do the surgery. Now we move to the second tumor here. Let me just uh... so even sarcoma most common age is 5 to 15 year. Most common age is 5 to 15 years. Long bone, most common involved is femur, flat bone, it is the pelvis. Clinical feature here is the pain. Now, x-ray will show onion peel reaction. Onion peel, you know in scenario based question, onion peel is also called as lamellated. Lamellated means in layers. Biopsy shows pseudo roseates, cells arranged in the form of circles, cells arranged in the form of circles. Gene mutation, fine. Now, if you do the karyotyping, if you do the karyotyping, you will notice that there is Translocation between, translocation between chromosome 11 and 22, chromosome 11 and 22, also between chromosome 7 and 22, chromosome 7 and 22. If you do the immunohistochemistry, you will see the tumor is positive for CD99. Treatment is radiotherapy or surgery. Remember surgery is preferred. You can also do chemotherapy. You can also do chemotherapy. Now 
multiple myeloma, the last tumor here. It is the most common primary malignant bone tumor of arising from red bone marrow. Short duration disease, it kills the patient within six months. Next topic would be uh, tenosynovitis. Tenosynovitis. X-ray shows rain drop skull. So, but you will get to see multiple black spots now many of the students they ask me sir how to differentiate raindrop skull from salt and pepper skull but the clinical scenario now what happens is many a time you people just send me picture sir what is the diagnosis in exam it is not like that they will give you clinical history now multiple myeloma patient will be elderly so you can get a clue that if the patient age is 65, 70 years and he is a male, it will be multiple myeloma. If your patient is younger, fine, then it will be salt and pepper skull of hyperparathyroidism. Now, in the blood investigation, you will get to see hypercalcemia, hypercalcemia. Now, treatment is chemotherapy. And what is the drug? Bortazomib. The old drug is thalidomide. Old drug is thalidomide. Now, what is the most common site? It is seen at lumbar vertebrae. It is seen at lumbar vertebrae seen at lumbar vertebrae don't worry about taking the notes or not being able to write i'll definitely share with you the notes the same pdf i'll share with you absolutely no need to worry very quickly tino synovitis tino synovitis so first tino synovitis which we are going to study is duputrine contracture Duputrine contracture. So, what it is, it is a type of fibromatosis. The fibrous tissue of the hand is affected. So, there is increased collagen type 3. Increased collagen type 3. You see, increased collagen type 3. What happens here is that there is flexion deformity flexion deformity now so in surgery you have read about peroni disease so it is associated with peroni disease it is associated with plantar fasciitis so peroni disease is curvature of penis plantar fasciitis is same problem occurring in the feet now what is the uh, treatment if the flexion if the flexion exceeds 30 degree if the flexion exceeds 30 degree will cut this band will cut this band if the flexion exceeds 30 degree. Now, decurvain disease. You see, decurvain disease is due to inflammation of abductor pollicis longer and extensor pollicis brevis. Now, they are also called the snuff box tendon. Now, there are two investigations. First investigation is an old investigation. See what is, it was done in the year 1927. It was very uncomfortable for the patient. See, this is the hand of doctor. This is the hand of patient. So doctor, what the doctor will do is, doctor will twist the hand of patient like this. 
and there will be very severe pain over here very severe pain over here right so this is not done what is the name of this test ishkov test now what is what we are doing we are doing something called as finkelstein test finkelstein test now finkelstein test it is done in two steps this is the hand of doctor this is the hand of patient now what will happen we ask the patient to do ulnar deviation so patient does the deviation by himself in the second step we ask the patient to close the fist and then do the ulnar deviation again there will be pain so this is not done by doctor but done by the patient himself done by the patient himself right so most of the time in examination they will just give you an image and they will ask you what test is being performed and what is the clinical condition for which this test is being done so you need to remember ishkov test is an old test it is not done what test is done now finkelstein test now finkelstein test is done in two steps treatment is not important trigger finger stenosing what is the word stenosing means narrowing narrowing stenosing tenosynovitis so what happens here is that the tendon sheath sheath means the covering it becomes narrow so that is why the tendon is inflamed your patient will hear a click sound on opening and closing the fingers especially on closing the finger especially on closing the fingers you see normally let's say this is the tendon sheath and the tendon travels freely now what has happened the sheath has become narrow the tendon cannot travel inside the sheath easily so it will be injured it will be injured again the treatment is not important this clicking sound is important for clinical questions then the next thing tennis elbow so tennis elbow you see buddy this is the lateral side of the elbow extensor muscles are attached here so tennis elbow is chronic tendinitis of extensor muscles origin from where they start it is common in carpenters bike riders now this is important for ine cet and maybe for a uh, neat pg also which muscle is involved extensor carpi radialis brevis muscle what is the test being performed cosen test this is the hand of the doctor this is the hand of patient we ask the patient to extend the wrist the doctor will try to stop it there will be severe pain at the common extensor muscle origin the second test is modsley test now this test again is important for ine cet or neat pg you ask the patient to pick up the finger and then there will be pain here modsley test modsley test right treatment is we ask the patient to wear the braces normally there is too much pressure over here but when the patient wears the braces no pressure is exerted or 
we can ask we can inject the own blood of the patient now this blood will contain platelets and the platelets will cause rapid healing rapid healing the opposite side the medial side if inflamed will cause golfer elbow now what is golfer elbow is also called swimmer elbow baseball elbow little leaguer elbow climber elbow suitcase elbow or forehand tennis elbow the name of test is reverse cousin test just the name is important this is important for neat pg and INE CET only right treatment at all is not important javelin thrower elbow is acute injury acute injury to ulnar collateral ligament similarly carpal tunnel syndrome carpal tunnel syndrome now the median nerve will be trapped behind the flexor retinaculum median nerve will be trapped behind the flexor retinaculum right now see buddy here the mnemonic important for neat pg and INE CET mnemonic is median trap so what are the causes myxodema edema diabetes mellitus idiopathic acromegaly neoplasm for example a lipoma trauma rheumatoid arthritis amyloidosis pregnancy those of you who say that sir we don't want to remember this much just remember rheumatoid arthritis and myxodema that these two condition can cause compression of median nerve can cause compression of median nerve compression of median nerve right now what is the investigation Fallon test Fallon test if you ask the patient to twist the hand like this this is palmar flexion Fallon test now if your patient does like this that is reverse Fallon test. This is also called as prayer sign. Also called as prayer sign. Now treatment is either you do physiotherapy or you release the retinaculum. Then in tarsal tunnel syndrome, the only thing which is important is the name of nerve. Posterior tibial nerve. Posterior tibial nerve is involved in tarsal tunnel syndrome is involved in tarsal tunnel syndrome now very quickly we'll see some of the important topics in spine you see buddies we have similar sounding terms first similar sounding term is spondylosis first similar sounding term is spondylosis spondylosis so anything wrong happens with the spine the name is spondylosis anything happens to the spine the name is spondylosis fine now spondylosis is anything wrong happens with the spine now spondylolysis it is stress fracture that means incomplete fracture of pars interarticularis pars interarticularis of the spine spondylolysis now this is important spondylolysis stress fracture commonly seen at 
L5. Now this is common in the cricket players, common in cheer leaders. Because it is a stress fracture, it is not easily seen on x-ray. So investigation of choice is MRI, spondylolysis. Treatment is immobilization, immobilization. Spondylolisthesis. Third term, spondylolisthesis. It is slippage of one vertebra over other. You see here, L5 vertebra is going to slip over S1. L5 vertebra, slippage of one vertebra over the other. Slippage of one vertebra over the other. Now, as you can see over here, L5 vertebra has slipped over S1. Spondylolisthesis. On this CT finding, you see it is very clear. L5 vertebra has slipped. Sorry. L3 uh, vertebra. So, L5 vertebra has slipped over. S1. So you see, if we get to see transverse x ray, we get to see inverted Napoleon hat. Inverted Napoleon hat. You see, it is looking like this. Inverted Napoleon hat. Inverted Napoleon hat. This is Napoleon hat. Inverted Napoleon hat. If we see the sidewise view, if we see the sidewise view, the lateral view, we get to see Scottish Terrier appearance. Scottish Terrier, that means the vertebrae, they appear like dog. Vertebrae, they appear like a dog. Scottish Terrier appearance. You see, the vertebrae, if we take the sidewise x-ray, they appear like a dog. That is called as Scotty dog or Scottish Terrier dog. I hope you can see many dogs here. Now, when there is spondylolisthesis, there is a fracture. There is a fracture. There is a fracture in spondylolisthesis. Spondylolisthesis, there is a fracture. Fine. There is a fracture. I'll zoom it up again. You see here, spondylolisthesis and normal. This side is normal. This side is spondylolisthesis. Spondylolisthesis. Now, if you see over here, this is broken. Spondylolisthesis. The neck of the dog will be broken. I'll draw the dog again here. So this is the dog. If you can see here, the neck is broken. If spondylolisthesis is present, Spondylolisthesis, if it is present, the neck will be broken. The neck of the dog will be broken. Now, the hangman fracture. You see, the hangman fracture is a type of spondylolisthesis. What happens in hangman fracture is C2 slips over C3. And also 
breaks. You see here C2 will slip over C3 and it will break. C2 will slip over C3 and it will break. You see here. So if you can see the C2 has broken down and it has gone slightly forward. C2 going slightly forward with respect to C3. Here at least you can see clearly that C2 has gone slightly forward with respect to C3 and if you can see it over here there is indeed a fracture. There is indeed a fracture. So you see here, there is a fracture. C2 has gone beyond C3. Now you see, Scotty dog appearance. Now, Scotty dog appearance is normal, but what is if there is a fracture, then the neck will be broken. So, if the neck is broken, that is spondylolisthesis, spondylolisthesis. Right, spondylolisthesis. Spondylitis we have already studied. Now these are not important. Yes, the different fracture. Jefferson fracture is the fracture of first vertebra. Is the fracture of first vertebra. How do we get to see open mouth or dontoid view? This will be the X-ray. Open mouth or dontoid view. This is C two. This is C1, cervical vertebra. This is open mouth odontoid view. Now, what is the treatment for Jefferson fracture? This is called as halo traction or called as halo brace. Halo traction or halo brace. Right? Hangman fracture, we have already studied what happens in the hangman fracture. C2 will slip forward and it will break and it will break. Undertaker fracture. Undertaker fracture is the fracture of C6 and C7 vertebra. C6 and C7 vertebra. Clay Shoveler fracture is the fracture of C7 tip. C7 tip. Right? So you see here. If there is only tip fracture, tip fracture, this is called as clay shoveler fracture. See here. If this fracture is there, this is called as clay. shoveler fracture clay shoveler fracture now chance fracture not important whiplash injury not important now skyvora skyvora is spinal cord injury with no radiological abnormality right spinal shock what happens in spinal shock the spinal cord is broken normally what happens is if everything is normal, what you do, you press the glans penis or vulva in the females. So, signal will go up to the brain through the spinal cord and signal will come down from brain through the spinal cord. Fine. And the anal sphincter, it becomes tight. Now, bulbocavernosus reflex 
is the first reflex to appear. That's the important thing about spinal shock. Only thing important about the spinal shock, bulbocavernosus reflex is the first reflex to appear after the spinal shock is over after the spinal shock is over this is an important question bulbo cavernosus reflex is the first reflex to appear after the spinal shock is over then cremasteric reflex you stroke the thigh and the testes go up now now these important for neat pg also for fmg just need to remember what causes central cord syndrome so we are reading something called as incomplete spinal shock let's say this is spinal cord normal now let's say this is broken like this so this is complete spinal cord trauma we are going to read the conditions where the spinal cord is not completely damaged. First is central cord syndrome. Only the center of the cord will be destroyed. Fine. Center of the cord will be destroyed. This occurs by extension injury. When the spine goes like this, extension injury. Brown C cord. This only the mechanism is important. This occurs by penetrating trauma. Somebody stabs your patient in the knife. Brown C cord syndrome. Anterior cord syndrome. Now this occurs from vascular ischemia. Vascular ischemia. Posterior cord syndrome this occurs by tumors right another condition in spine is pivd prolapsed intervertebral disc the question most commonly where does this occur most commonly the disc between L5 and S1 is damaged. L5 and S1 is damaged. Now this is more common in males. What will it cause? It will cause radiating pain. Pain which will go to the legs. Pain which will go to the legs. Now clinical test straight leg raising test patient cannot raise the legs beyond 35 degrees cannot raise the legs beyond 35 degrees investigation of choice is mri treatment is micro discectomy you remove the disc now this question was asked around three years ago what are the flag signs of backache now due to prolonged sitting you people are studying these days you might be having backache but then some people have backache which is very serious so red sign means some life threatening or limb threatening condition is the cause of back pain it is not an ordinary back pain now if the back pain is in young patient less than 20 years more than 50 years now this back pain could be due to tumors could be due to tumors sphincter disturbances that means 
स्पाइनल कॉर्ड कंप्रेशन इज देयर स्पाइनल कॉर्ड कंप्रेशन सिमिलरली पेरियनल लॉस आल्सो मींस स्पाइनल कॉर्ड कंप्रेशन के कैक्सिया पेशेंट डजंट फील लाइक ईटिंग vomits every now and then that is also a sign of tumor radiculopathy tingling and numbness due to pain now yellow flag sign that means the back pain will cause problem to the patient back pain will become chronic social isolation these are not very important emotional withdrawal and hedonia that means patient is always worried about back pain now these are not very important i'm again repeating right because of back pain your patient has started taking alcohol or steroids for medication now these are the yellow flag signs of back pain yellow flag signs of back pain now the spinal cord where it ends the superior part is conus medullaris the inferior part is cauda equina sometimes what may happen is the disc may damage the conus medullaris part or the cauda equina part now let's say the disc comes here compresses the conus medullaris disc comes here compresses the cauda equina now long list you'll just remember whatever i tell you here so here conus medullaris is bilateral cauda equina is unilateral cauda equina is unilateral right now bladder control is gone in conus medullaris bladder control is preserved in cauda equina is preserved in cauda equina sexual function are lost in conus medullaris sexual function are preserved in cauda equina conus medullaris is sudden and bilateral cauda equina is gradual and unilateral now this is very important topic for neat pg only the four points which i have mentioned you need to remember you don't need to remember any other point you don't need to remember any other point right okay so with this buddies we move to the next very small topic that is the club foot everything absolutely everything is already written fine i'll just tell you which part is important now for the next two three topics everything is already written and i know i have to end the class on time don't worry now club foot first of all why it is called club foot because the feet of the affected baby they appear like golf bat fine the most common cause of this condition is idiopathic it is most commonly associated with neural tube defect it is seen in first born males what is the chief pathology hypoplastic talus talus that is important for neat pg what is the mnemonic for deformities cave so first cavus that means increase vertical arc of the foot adductus the forefoot is very close to each other the forefoot is very close to each other varus the feet is 
turned inward. Equinus, the heel is not touching the ground. Heel is not touching the ground. Diagnosis, antenatal, 24 weeks with the help of ultrasound. You can do the diagnosis at birth also. Now, when we do the x-ray buddies, we see something called as kite angle. The normal value is 20 to 40. You see, the kite angle is between talus and calcaneum. Now, in club foot, this angle is less than 20 degree. This angle is less than 20 degree, right? Okay. Now, what is the treatment? Earlier, we used kite method. Manipulation was done by the mother. It, this method failed very, very badly. This method did not give good result. Now, what we are do, using Ponsetti method. From day one, the baby is seen and treated by doctor. Let's say this is how the baby comes. So, at the day one, we'll apply the first cast. It will correct cavus. After one or two weeks, we'll apply the second cast. It will correct adductus and varus together. Then after one or two more weeks, we'll apply third cast. It will correct equinus deformity. It will correct the equinus deformity. Equinus deformity. This is called as serial casting. One after the other. Now, for need PG, they ask you this. What is the least correctable deformity? Equinus. Now, after this, we make the child wear Dennis Brown splint round the clock for one year. Now, this is Dennis Brown splint. Dennis Brown splint. Now, this is to be used for at least one year. Dennis Brown splint. We can use it up to seven years of age. During daytime, we make the child wear special CTEV shoes. Now, if the child comes to you at one to four years of age for the first time, we'll do the surgery called turco operation. This is a type of posterior medial soft tissue release. We just give a cut on the soft tissue. We just give a cut on the soft tissue. For example, you see here, buddy, we just cut this soft tissue and we lengthen it up. If the child comes to you at four to eight years of age for the first time, we'll do Ivan Delvin operation. Just the name is important for neat PG or INE, right? If the child comes to you at eight to 10 years of age, you will remove a large part of the bone. You will just cut it and straighten it. That is called wedge tarsectomy. If the child comes to you after 10 years of age, we will do triple orthodesis. That means we will fuse all the bones to get a stable foot. Now, Triple orthodesis, which three joints? Now, the name of the joint is very important for neat PG. Which three joints we fuse? Talonavicular, talocalcaneal, calcaneo cuboid, calcaneo cuboid. Now, what is the correct order of treatment? First, we'll correct cavus, second, adductus and varus together. This is important. And then equinus. If this order is not followed, the patient will develop something which is called as rocker bottom foot. Rocker bottom foot. This is rocker bottom foot. Right? Now, this 
also has got a list of uh, important x-rays there uh, important x-ray views i mean that is just for, for a quick revision you can do it later let's very very quickly see the knee joint the knee joint you see knee joint what is important here the patella fracture patella fracture if it is undisplaced undisplaced means the two fragments they lie in front of each other so what is the treatment we treat it with the help of cylinder cast also called as tube cast if the fracture patella is displaced moving away from each other then what do we do we'll do tension band wiring we'll do k wire fixation k wire fixation remember this was a question last last year k wire fixation like this just give me a minute Yes, 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 very good, Dr. Pratyusha ji. Now, if the fracture patella is comminuted, we'll do partial or total patellectomy. Now, what is the, uh, these words, comminuted, compound, these are very similar sounding term. First of all, what is, what is simple fracture? So, simple fracture is, when the bone is broken into two fragments, when the bone is broken into two fragments, that is simple fracture. When the bone is broken into more than two fragments, that is called as complex fracture. When the bone is broken into many fragments, that is called as comminuted fracture. Complicated fracture. When the bone is associated with other organ injury, that is called as complicated fracture. Compound fracture is just another name for open fracture. So, make sure you know your terms very well. Collateral ligament injury, only thing which is important is most commonly it is the medial collateral ligament which is injured. Lateral collateral ligament injury is very, very rare. Very, very rare. See here, buddies. This occurs when the knee joint of your patient is hit from outside. So, medial collateral ligament will break and the lateral collateral ligament will just bend. Will just bend. Medial collateral ligament break. And lateral ligament, it will just bend. Rest of things are not important. Anterior cruciate ligament. If you look at the knee from the side, this is femur, this is tibia, this is anterior, this is posterior. Now, this is the anterior cruciate ligament. Fine. Gastillo Anderson classification is the classification for open fracture, Dr. Chiranji. Very, very good. Actually, it's very important. We'll discuss that also. Now, main stabilizer of the knee joint, it will present, prevent excess femur rotation over tibia. That means it will not allow tibia to move forward with respect to femur. So, it, will, it is important for walking downhill as well as for uphill. Mechanism is twisting force. Clinical feature. See, buddies, in scenario-based question, if you read immediate swelling, buddies, if you read immediate swelling, let's say there has been a trauma. And after trauma, if it is immediate swelling, it is ACL injury. If it is late swelling, it is meniscus 
injury. It is meniscus injury. What are the clinical investigation? Anterior drawer test. Now, this test is done in 90 degree flexion. That is why this is only done for chronic injuries. Only done for chronic injuries. Done, for, done in 90 degree flexion. So, it is done in chronic injuries. Chronic injuries. Lashman test. Now, this test can be done in acute injury. See the word is Lashman. Can be done in acute injuries. Pivot shift test is considered specific test. Specific test. Lely test or liver test is a comparatively new test is a comparatively new test. Now, how we do the reconstruction? We cannot repair the ligament. What will we do? We'll remove a part of patellar tendon like this. We'll remove a part of patellar tendon along with bone, along with bone on both sides. See, watch the animation. ACL breaks. Patellar tendon removed along with bony plugs. Hole in femur. Hole in tibia. Then we fix. Like this. So this becomes our new ACL. This becomes our new ACL. Anterior cruciate ligament. Right? It cannot be repaired. So, similarly, posterior cruciate ligament. Posterior cruciate ligament will give you difficulty in walking uphill as well as downhill. What are the tests? Posterior draw test or Godfrey test. So, if you ask the patient to lie like this, the tibia will go posteriorly. Tibia will go posteriorly. That is called as SAG sign. Investigation of choice again, MRI and reconstruction is done with gracilis tendon graft. Meniscus injury. So, first of all, they will ask you which meniscus is injured, lateral meniscus or medial meniscus. So, it is the medial meniscus which is more commonly injured because it has very thin body. So, that means it is weak. It is less, it has less circular shape. That means it has got more surface area. So, more chance of injury. Now, when the femur rotates over tibia, the lateral meniscus is pulled away. There is no such mechanism. There is no such mechanism for medial meniscus. So, it is trapped between the two bones. Now, medial meniscus is fixed to the capsule of knee joint. That is why it cannot move anywhere. It cannot move anywhere. Now, most common pattern of tear is longitudinal, which may become bucket handle, which may become bucket handle type of tear. So, this is bucket handle type of tear. Investigation of choice is MRI, whereas the gold standard investigation is arthroscopy. 
Now clinical feature, pain and swelling will occur after two to three days. If the tear is present in outer part of the menisker, we will do the repair, that is meniscorephy. Why? Because the outer part is vascular, it will heal. If the tear is present in the interior part, we will do meniscectomy. Because the inner part is avascular, it will not heal at all. It will not heal at all. Now, you need to remember as one liner that what is the clinical investigation of choice? It is the McMurray test because it is done in supine position, which keeps your patient absolutely comfortable. It is done in supine position, which keeps your patient absolutely comfortable. But very quickly, you see, this is how you identify an Austin Moore pin. Austin Moore pin. So you see, it will be smooth over here, whereas on the other side, there will be ribs. Null spin. Smooth, smooth, and ribs. K wire, you know it. Austin Moore prosthesis. Now, this is used for hip hemi arthroplasty. So, in Austin Moore, you'll see that there are two holes. There are at least two holes. One hole, second hole, Austin Moore prosthesis. Austin Moore prosthesis. So there are two holes. The name is Moore. Two holes. See, this is Austin Moore. This is Thompson. Single solid body. No hole at all. Bipolar hip prosthesis, it is present in two parts. First part, second part will fit inside. Second part will fit inside. I'll tell you which traction is important. So you see buck traction, buck traction. So this is the weight. So buck traction is a type of skin. Traction, buck traction. See, this is buck traction. Buck traction. Now you see here, the leg is straight. If the leg is lifted up, it becomes Russell traction. If the leg is lifted up, it becomes Russell traction. Russell traction. So if the leg is straight, that is buck traction. If the leg is lifted up, that is Russell traction. Russell traction. That is Bryant traction. Bryant traction for children, also called as gallo traction. Gallo traction. Bryant traction for children is called gallo traction. Gallo traction. Gallo traction. Not important. Hello traction you already seen. Hello traction.
हेलो ट्रैक्शन क्रामर वायर दैट इज जस्ट फॉर स्टेबलाइजेशन ऑफ द फ्रैक्चर Somi brace. So if the head is not covered, fine. Only the neck, chest are covered. That is somi brace. Taylor brace. Taylor brace is important because it is used for tuberculosis. It is used for tuberculosis. Figure of eight brace. You know it is used for clavicle fracture. Figure of eight brace. aeroplane splint brachial plexus injury sugar tongue thumb spica image based question only from here stack splint knuckle bender splint so if you see the fingers in flexion and if you see the thumb absolutely free that is called as knuckle bender splint used for ulnar nerve injury von rosen splint it is used for ddh developmental dysplasia of hip Dennis Brown splint you have already seen. Hard cervical collar also called as Philadelphia collar. Philadelphia collar. Philadelphia collar. Right, buddies. So, with this, uh, we'll end the class. Whatever topics we could not discuss, nevertheless, I'll send the notes for that also. All the topics which we could not discuss, for example, we could not discuss the general consideration in fracture, infections, and hip joint. These three topics which I could not discuss, I'll definitely send the notes. Fine. So kindly allow me to end the class here and uh, if you have any queries, I am uh, always available. You guys are tired. I totally understand that at this moment you guys are tired. Right, then uh, can I please end the class? If you have any queries, you can always send and I'll uh, send the notes as early as possible. You know, it will take me around 40-45 minutes to reach home and as soon as I'm home, I'll uh, share my notes on the PDF channel. बीमजी एंड कर देते हैं क्लास को